to another episode of Groovy Tuesday. My name's Paul Church from Clarity Stamp here in the UK. How are we all doing today? Um, I shall waffle for a little bit because I know it takes a while for people to, to come along and join in. Um, Stuart is in the room with you today, so if you have any questions, then fire away. And I'm sure some of the lovely design team will be with us as well today, as always, um, keeping us company. I'm just going to move that mouse because it's on the end stream and I don't want to accidentally click that. So once again, good morning. Welcome to another episode of Groovy Tuesday. Um, good morning, Jane. There we go. I can see people starting to come in now. So welcome. Last week we had a number of newcomers. So hopefully they've come back this week. Um, we're going to start a brand new project, um, get into the festive spirit of things. Never too early to get Christmassy, is it? Good morning, Judith. Good morning, Mo. There we go. Here it comes, everybody. So um, just wait for the all clear from Stuart. Oh, there we go. Sounds is great. Thank you, Stuart. So that's super duper. So, oh, look, I look up and everybody's in the room. Good morning, Jane, Sharon, Ken, Sammy. Good morning, good morning. Oh, it's lovely to have your company again um, for another Groovy Tuesday. And, um, yeah, we, we, we're going to start a new project today that will carry us on for a couple of weeks at least. Um, got some beautiful sort of inspiration from the design team to showcase the plates. So we're going to be looking at the Christmas tree. They're right in front of me. They're see-through, aren't they? Oh, dear, oh, dear. That's a good start. So let's have a look at these. So let's, we'll go on the, how is it? So we're going to be looking at Linda's layered Christmas tree and also Linda's layered stocking. Um, beautiful, beautiful plates. And there's so many different elements on them. Um, and when I show you the artwork shortly, um, they're so versatile. They really are. I mean, just using the different elements, the bows, you've got, I mean, look at that angel. Um, then you've got all the toys coming out of the stocking. Um, very Nordic, really, really sort of love this design. And it's amazing by changing the color of the parchment, how you can get a different look. So, uh, so that's where we're heading for the next couple of weeks. So hopefully you've got your, your plates. Sammy says her favorite plates by far. Excellent. Good morning, Josie, Kay, Sheila, Ken, Addy. Good morning from the Netherlands. And I saw there was an Australia from Brisbane, Fernando. Is it Fernando? Can't, I haven't got the glasses on. I can't see that far. <laughs> Apologies if I pronounce that incorrectly. Um, so, um, yes, and as Jane says, if you use a light wave, you can use them on paper too. And I've actually got Jane's sample here in front of me. How spooky is that? Um, should we have a look at some inspiration? Because we've got the, the two lovely plates and, um, and then what we also have are the card blanks. And this is what Dave makes on that big platen press. So we've got the Christmas tree shaped card blanks, which you can use them as they are, or you can cut them in half and then use two of them. And then we also have the lovely little stocking as well so the same principle you can cut those in half but they just make fantastic little cards and you could use these you could stamp on these as well um so you don't have to use the card blanks they're available separately and i'm sure stuart will um pop um the link up to the various different card blanks for the the tree and the stockings so should we have a look at some inspiration while we're, everyone's pulling up a chair Oh, we've got another person from Australia. Um, we've got a guy from France. Oh, we are very international today. Good morning, everybody. Afternoon, evening, wherever it, whatever the time is, wherever you are in the world. It's nice to have your company. Okay, so let's have a look at some inspiration. So let's have a look um, at some artwork for the tree first. Okay, let's bring them in one at a time. So I love this one. This one is so, let me zoom in a little bit now that I've 
spread those out a bit. So let's see, I've hidden up the piece of paper. Let's see if I can get it right. No, got it wrong again. There we go. I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to stand up for this in case I need to adjust it again. So this is a piece created by um, the lovely Linda Williams herself. And this is using her snow family. I mean, this is so... It shows how versatile the actual plates are and how you can mix and match with other plates you have in your collection. So that's that one there created by the lovely Linda herself. Then we have this one here, also created by Linda. And what Linda's done, she's used the multi-needle tools to decorate. And she's done various different layers. I'm not going to lift them up, um, but look at that. Isn't that beautiful? And remember I said to you how by changing the colour of the parchment can change the look. So, I mean, this would be beautiful for like a baby's first Christmas. If I put them side by side, it's the same, but this time it's got the bow instead of the star. Now, the next piece I absolutely adore. I mean, I dread to think how long it took Glynis to do this one. So what Glynis has done, rather than use the shaped card blanks, she's created an aperture. So she's traced out the outline and then Pico cut the, the middle out. And I'm sure she would have kept that to use for another project. And then use one of our beautiful parchment poppets in the background. But let me bring it, say how long it would have took Glynis. Look at that grid work. Where am I going? There we go in the background. Now that is dedication, isn't it? And I'm guessing that's just been done um, using the basic grid to dot, perforate and cut. But that is, I really, really love that one. Then we have a piece by Francis. So now when we look at the, the finished piece, what Francis has done, she's only used, where's my Christmas tree plate? She's only used part of the tree, you see. So she's done one, two, three, four layers and missed the bottom two out. But isn't that beautiful? And then she's used one of Linda's children in front of the tree to decorate. These, we've got the, the plates on a special offer as well and I'm sure Stuart will pop the link up to that, okay. So that's that one. And then remember Jane was mentioned a moment ago about paper. So this is using the designer paper and Jane's decorated her tree using that. So this would be lovely now with um, our beautiful companion papers because there's so many different shades of green or blue or pink. Um, and because it's just going around the outside, I think it's really quite easy to use the plate as that guide to give you your shape. So that's the Christmas tree. So that gives you some inspiration on that, hopefully, some beautiful pieces. And whilst we're on the Christmas tree, don't forget to, uh, let me just stand up a little bit, hang on, zoom out of it. Don't forget to check out the Clarity Matters blog. Every Sunday, there's a brand new step-by-step um, -step project by one of the design team. And over the past couple of weeks, there's been two Christmas tree projects, okay? So I haven't got the actual artwork here with me, but let me show you, I printed off the, the pictures. So this one here has been done by Glynis, and this was on the 18th of September, and she's used one of Linda's Christmas treasures in the center. Isn't that beautiful? Really, really love that. Glynis has done pico cutting around the outside. But what I love about these two plates that we're going to look at over the next couple of weeks is that they're simplistic in design. So it means even if you're not at your pico cutting stage, you can easily cut these out with a normal pair of scissors. Okay. So then last week, Jane did this one. This was layered. So Jane used the green, she used cranberry crush and bottle green parchment um, in different layers. So if you want to see how either of those were created, 
then check out the Clarity Matters blog. Because um, you can go back, I mean, and it's all free and it's a step by step. Um, the time and effort that the, the ladies put into these projects is sort of phenomenal. For, 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 is really, they put a lot of work into it. <laughs> um, and I'm sure the ladies will pop those images um, onto Facebook as well to give you a little bit more um, inspiration. Okay, so that's the Christmas tree or tree, whichever you want to call. So now let's have a look at the stocking. Okay. Ooh, sorry, a bit blurry on there. This one here has been created by Linda and she's used two different shades of teal to create that and layered up. I mean, doesn't that look gorgeous? This stocking belongs to Joshua. Beautiful. And then another piece by Linda. I mean, look at this one. So this has the toys coming out of the stocking and Linda's used the card blanks on both of them. Okay. So look at that, absolutely stunning. Then the next piece, let's have a look who, I'm sure, let's have a look. So the next one, look, we go pink. So this would be great. I mean, it's not necessarily just for Christmas. This would be for a new baby, like booties. Um, but can you see what I mean by changing the color of the parchment um, can give it a different look. Okay, then we have another piece. So if you don't want to do it as sort of like a, a freestanding shape, then you can also, this one here by Josie. So let's pop these little stockings to one side. This one here created by Josie. So she's taken an A5 piece of parchment, used the rectangle um, scallop to go around the outside. Okay, and just done it onto the clear parchment and then introduce the colour. And I'm guessing she's done some dorsing in the larger areas and then coloured in the toys. Aren't they beautiful? Okay, so looking at the toys on their own, this is a piece that Carol Pankstello created and she used um, Jane's frame. And so she's got the toys coming out of the frame. Okay, really, really clever. Love that. And it, for me, this really does show the versatility of the various different plates. So whether you want to do them um, as a shaped tree or stocking, or whether you just want to do it in one layer on a card, the, the, the choices are just endless. They really are. So we'll have another recap on those later on for those that are joining a little bit later but I just wanted to just give you some while everyone was pulling up a chair and getting comfy just to give people a sort of a few ideas now I did see a question about how do we use the paper on the plate now I'll probably someone reminds me so Stuart can you remind me for next week please to show how to use the paper with the plates okay and then we'll do that I'll show you a quick and easy way of doing that next week Okay, so busy week at Clarity Towers this week. For those of you that are in the shack with Barb yesterday, um, we've got the shack, um, Groovy Tuesday today. Then on Thursday, we head up to TV for the next installment of Linda's Christmas Treasures for the new and exclusive uh, four o'clock and eight o'clock tomorrow night. And then on Friday at 8 a.m., and then two hours of um, Crafting with Clarity at 9 a.m. and 1 p.m. Um, that's Thursday and Friday. Then we come back after that show, unload, reload the cars back up, um, and then back up there on Sunday for the first Sunday of the month, October already. Um, crafting with Clarity Classics and real beautiful. I mean, there's beautiful artwork on all of those shows. Um, but for me, this is where... I think it was sort of, it's very, um, yeah, it's beautiful artwork. So, um, so yeah, okay. So we'll have a, a sneaky peek at the, well, not a sneaky peek, Barbara showcased it yesterday, didn't she? 
um, for the next new and exclusive. I've got a couple of samples that Jilly's pulled out for me to show you as well, to tease you a little bit further. But um, I thought we'll start nice and easy with the Christmas tree. And um, so this is a piece that um, Linda created. Okay. And what Linda's done, she's done it all from one piece of A4 parchment. But you can see the depth of the colour. Let me hold that up a little bit. You can see the graduation of the colour where it gets lighter and darker and darker and darker. And that's because the way in which the plate's been designed is that you can easily cut out the designs and lay them all up. Okay. So you can decide on what colour parchment you want to go for, whether you want to go for clear parchment um, or whether you want to go for a, some of our coloured parchment, whether you want to go for designer parchment, it's entirely up to you. And you can also decide whether you just want to do it on one layer, if you're new to Groovy, or like we have in this one, we're going to do it in layers. Okay. And here's a, a piece of A4 parchment. So this is green parchment to show how you can get all of the different layers out of one A4 piece. Okay. So, I mean, it also shows the different sizes of trees that you can have as well. So that's the tree exactly how it comes. That's got one missing. And then if I turn that round, you've got a shorter tree and then you've got a baby tree. So you can decide, but what I'm going to do over the next couple of weeks is we're going to use this um, to build up our tree. And then also what we're going to do, I'm going to do one where we're going to Pico cut out for those that are that far on the bus journey. And then another one where we'll just cut out of a normal pair of scissors. Okay, so entirely up to you on what direction you want to go. So it, it covers all different levels of parting. Okay, so I hope that you'll continue to join me for the next couple of weeks as we work through these beautiful designs from Linda Williams. So what are we going to need for this week? Okay. Let's get our list of ingredients together. So we're going to go with the Christmas tree. So we've got the Christmas tree plate. I'm also going to be using the calligraphy plate mate. Okay, except for the A5 plates. Now, if you haven't got that just yet, or then we can still get away, but you just need to be careful with parchment. So we're going to need that. We're going to need our groovy guard. We're going to need our tumble dry sheet. We're going to use our number one and number two groovy tool. And we're also going to use some groovy tabs. Now, when it comes to parchment, we've got choices. If you want to go really sort of traditional, we've got this lovely selection here, which is bottle green and cranberry crush. So it's a darker color green and a lovely, as it says, cranberry colour. Okay, so real sort of deep, rich greens and, and reds. If you want to go a little bit more vibrant and zesty, then we have the Christmas parchment, and that has the lovely bright green, the red, the black, and the silver. Okay, so you can decide, or you could just go clear parchment. It's entirely up to you. But for this project, what I'm going to do, I'm going to take a piece of the green. I'm going to go, I want mine nice and bright. Okay, so piece of A4 parchment. Now, if you don't have any A4 parchment, then you've just got the clear, or maybe you've got some of the, um, the A5 different green parchment that we used to do. It's entirely up to you. And you'll notice with the colour part, so you've got that lovely sheen on one side, and then it's more muted on the other side. Okay, that's the magic of the design of parchment. Ooh, sorry, didn't mean that to, hey, there we go. So that's what we're going to need for the start of this project. Okay, 
So I'll give you a few minutes to gather all your bits and pieces together. I'll have a slurp of coffee. Okay. So, yeah, I think this is going to be a fun project. And I love the way in which Linda's designed them, that you can pico cut them or you can just cut them out of normal scissors. And as Jane, as we looked at... Um, we looked at that piece from Jane, you can also use paper as well. Okay. Right. Okay. Am I waffled enough? <laughs> Have I bored you? <laughs> Have you all fallen to sleep or are you still joining the room? Okay. Right. I think we're good to get started. Okay. Right. Let's go to the overhead. So we're going to take our plate and we need to make sure, as usual, we can read groovy in the top right hand corner. Nice and easy. Plate is in position. And what we're going to do first is we're going to, I've got the shiny side up. Sorry, sorry, sorry. The shiny side up. And what I'm going to do I'm just going to line it up so I can take full advantage of the parchment. I'm going to line it up down the edge of the plate there and as close to the bottom as I can get. I don't want to go too close because if I want to pico cut, then I need to have a little bit of space to do that. So I'm going to attach my parchment with my groovy tabs. Okay, so have we got any newbies in the room? Who who was new last week and you've come back for more? Come back for more, it sounds. <laughs> oh, I don't know. So tumble dry sheet, we'll give that a nice wipe with our tumble dry sheet. Okay, there we go. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna do some white work. If I bring in the piece that Linda created, you could see what Linda's done. She's done white work on the lovely sort of garland and the ribbons. Okay. So we know um, from previous Groovy Tuesdays and the various different tutorials and shows that we do, um, that in order to get a really sort of nice, soft, bright white, then we need to trace out with the number two tool. Okay, so what we're going to do first, we're going to do the pieces with the number two tool first. Okay, so pop that to one side. Okay, groovy guard. And um, all we need to concentrate, because we're going to layer up the tree, we just need to concentrate on the bottom part. We're going to do the outline but the actual work piece that we're going to work on um, is the bottom layer. Okay, so if I slide that forward a bit so we're more central, gives me something to lean on. So I'm going to take my groove tool, I'm going to go to the number two tool, which has a little ball on the end, and we're going to do those elements first. Okay, so all we're going to do is do the garland very gently. So I like to do all the little bits first. So we're gonna go number two on the garland. Okay, can you see? Yeah, you can see how it's starting to, let's pop that underneath. There, so we can, come on, lift up. All fingers and thumbs. Thought that would ease, there we go. Yeah, very, very faint. I'll zoom in a little bit, shall I? Okay. Zoom in. Let me move this piece of paper that tells me which way I need to go. Hang on. So I need to zoom in. So I need to go that way. There we go. <laughs> I've just seen some of the comments of where um, everybody is today. Um, 
So somebody's in the hairdressers watching, somebody's in McDonald's having um, coffee. Oh, and that, see, technology, very, very clever that you're able to sort of watch. And thank you for your, your dedication for tuning in wherever you are. Um, that's lovely. So we're going to trace out the garland with the number two tool. Okay, I'm going to do that. Then we're going to go back and do the bows. So it, there isn't sort of, I mean, you could do the bows as you go along. But I don't know, it's weird, isn't it? How we, when we look at a, a design on the elements that we want to trace out first. So I've got the next bow. There we go. Nice and easy. And we've got another little bow here. So who's joining in and getting in the groove with me? Or are you just watching? I suppose if you're in McDonald's, maybe you've taken your groovy plates to McDonald's or the hairdressers. Um, maybe you're getting in the groove when you're out on, in, on the go. So then we're going to do the, the little baubles. So we're not adapting the design in any way. We're just taking it exactly how Linda has designed it. Okay. So that's that part there. And then we're going to do the ribbon, still using the number two tool that goes around the tree. Just like so. See, nice, nice and slow. It's nice to sort of just get in the groove um, and just chill. So, this is my hour, one hour a week where I just chill. Catch up with some friends in the room so, okay, so that's that traced out now. So let's lift this up, okay, and we'll turn that over. So you can see now how we've got the soft white line. I mean, it's hard to see whether it's soft or whether it's crisp because I haven't done any comparisons with the, the line art. Okay, so now I'm going to turn that over and pop that one back into place. So that lines up perfectly. Now I'm gonna to go to the number one tool and I'm gonna trace out the rest of the design. When I say the rest of the design, all we need to do is trace the outline. Don't need to worry about any of the decorations in the middle and the bottom. Okay, so let's have a look. So we're gonna, I'm gonna start up here. Just like so. And we only need to do part of the star because this star is going to keep being covered up. And we only need to do the outline. If you find that you're getting a little bit of resistance like I am, then take your tumble dry sheet and give it another wipe. That's better. So we're going to follow just the outline of the tree. I mean, if you go into the other parts, it doesn't matter. Um, so, really, try not to jump out of the groove, Mr. Paul. So now we're coming round to the bottom. So now we're going to do the bottom part of the tree. Just like so. And now I'm going to come down on this side. Let me just move that down slightly. So down to there. Down to there. And this the star will look a little bit odd. But as I say, this is all this is doing at the top at this point is giving us 
our guide for when we build up our layers. Okay. Nice and easy. So what have you been all up to lately? The weather's definitely changing now, isn't it? I mean, I know we're sort of almost at the end of September. Um, but the mornings are definitely a little bit more chilly. And so are the evenings. So, um, yes, I think the weather's about to change. And then I'm going to do the base of the tree. Okay. So let's have a look now what we've got. So you should have, if you're following the instruction, right, okay, so now you can definitely see the difference in the brightness of the line art, can't you? The outline of the tree is a crisp, bright white. And then this part, what we're going to do the white work in, um, is definitely softer. Okay. So that's one part done. And look, I've missed a part of the star there. But I'm not worried. doesn't matter. Pop that back in place. And just add it in. Okay. So that is new groovy tabs. <laughs> Always a bit of a struggle to get it off the thing first. So now we're going to slide our tree across. And we are going to ignore the bottom layer. Okay. So what we're going to do, so we don't want this one. So we're going to move our parchment up. And let's have a look. We're going to go about there. Okay. Relocate my groovy tab to there. Get the one from over here and hold that in place like so. Give it another wipe. So now we're going to repeat the process. We're going to go to the number two tool and we're just going to concentrate on the second section. So number two tool to do the garland. Just like so. So what else have I got to tell you today? Let me see. Um, so yeah, so it's a busy week on, on TV. Normally there's a, a week in between um, the new and exclusive and the Friday shows. Um, but it's just the way that the, the month, has, the days have fallen during this month. Um, hence sort of being a little bit more manic than normal. Um, so three days of TV coming up and then on Wednesday back up to TV again for a one day special. Some more designs from lovely Linda Williams. Many of you may already have them but I'll give you a sneaky peek on that on what I'm doing with those next Tuesday. I don't want to give the game away too early. Okay. Haven't been on TV for many, many years, but beautiful designs. And like a lot of Linda's designs, so versatile. Okay, so that's the number two work done. Now on this part of the ball ball here, there's a little dangly bit. I'm going to go to the number one tool to make that nice and crisp. So this time we're going to use the number one tool again to trace out our design. So now we have a little short tree. Who'd have thought that a tree could be so versatile? in design. I suppose that's the, the magic of Linda's designs, isn't it? 
So I'm going to start back up at the top. We're going to do the star. Just like so. I, why do I do it? I don't need that bit, but I've done it. <laughs> oh dear. See, I get carried away. And I've just done that as well. Oh, wow. If it's easier for you, trace out the whole of the star. Let's keep it consistent. Let's do the whole of the star. It's not going to make any difference to our finished piece. But it just makes a difference to me. Okay. So tracing out the outline. Just like so. So, yeah, don't forget to check out the Clarity Matters blog um, every Sunday. Um, <coughs> excuse me. And say that the past two weeks, the lovely Jane and Glynis have created two completely different projects using this same plate. And as I say, I'm sure if you want a, a closer look, they'll pop those designs um, into um, Clarity Worldwide and Groovy Worldwide and answer any questions you may have. Okay, so now we have a smaller tree. Okay, so easy, it really is. See, I mean, that one looks odd now, doesn't it? But that's because I got carried away. But I'm not worried about that. So now what we're going to do, we're going to turn upside down. So we one, two. So now we want the next one. I mean, like the project Jane did, Jane did um, her piece um, using two different colour parchment. So you really, from one A4 sheet of parchment, you could do this in green that we're doing now, repeat it in the Cranberry Crush, and then alternate the layers um, so that you'd get two trees out of two pieces of parchment. So number two tool. See, so once you, you get into it and you, it's just remembering if you want to, if you want to do the white work, just to swap over to the number two tool. Okay. There we go. Let's see, I've gone differently this time. I've done on all the other two pieces, isn't that strange? On all the other two pieces, I did all the garland first and then went back and did the, the bows. And now this time, I'm doing it as I go along. He's a strange man. Very strange. No right or reason. I get the same result that I'm after. So, um, yeah, see? Strange. So finish off that. Then we're going to add in, I mean, again, with these these little baubles, if you wanted to, you could put whatever baubles in there. There's loads of different baubles on the plate. If you wanted to, say you wanted to have all of them as circular baubles, or you wanted to have all of them as heart baubles, you just relocate your parchment and add your baubles where you want. And there's also candles on the plate as well. Right, let me bring that up. Look, you've got lovely little candles. If you want very, very traditional type of um, Christmas tree with candles on the end. Okay, so let's go back up to the star. And trace that. So I've gone to the number one tool now. And stop. <laughs> I had to think about that one. And then come in, and then click. I mean, I'm going slow. I mean, it's not a race, is it, um, to make a Christmas tree? Um, 
you can go at whatever speed you like. Okay, so now we're going to do bottom. So, nice and easy. I'm going to come back up to the top. Did you notice that one day, rather than go, I find it easier coming towards me, um, rather than sort of going away from me when I'm tracing out a design. Okay, I've got to go back in and do that one there. See? Because <laughs> I'm not concentrating. So let's put the star on all of them, shall we? Just for uniformity. <laughs> okay. Just, oh, look, you've got lovely little candy canes as well. Mmm. Definitely have fun with those. Oh, I've just had a really good idea. It's rare, I know, I know. I reckon that the elves and the gnomes would look brilliant. You know this piece that, uh, let me bring that piece in that Linda did. Look, see this piece that Linda created with the um, her snow family peeping out from behind. I reckon the groovy gnomes and elves will work perfectly on that. Yeah, that'd be brilliant. Have the little gnomes and the elves peeking out from behind the tree. I mean, this is just pure joy, this is. Um, but yeah, that'd be great. So if you've got the elves and the gnomes, but you haven't got the snow family, then maybe that's a, an idea for you. Mm, he says. Okay, so that's the next layer on there. So you can see now how we're we're starting to fill up our piece of A4 parchment. It doesn't matter that I'm not central. It's just about using. I think so. That was that one. So there we go. So now I want to go. To the next one. There we go. So let's relocate our groovy tabs. Just like so. Give it another little wipe. Number two tool next. There we go. Speed it up a little bit now because I've just seen the, the time 22 already. These hours really do go quickly. Do they go quickly for you at home as well? Um, or is it just me? I'm sure it's just me. Now, if you've missed, if you've just re joined halfway through or you've only just joined the party, then don't forget that you can go to our Clarity YouTube page and you can watch it back afterwards. You can watch it whenever you want, as many times as you want. Um, and you can go back and have a look at all the Shack Shack episodes, um, all the tutorials that are on there, all of the previous episodes of Groovy Tuesday. Um, there's so much information and knowledge on the YouTube page. Maybe you're looking for a little bit of inspiration. Just go on there and have a sec. But I know that you'll be there for a while. Once you get on there, it's like, oh, click this one. Oh, click that one. So. Okay. Right. Number one tool. So let's Let's trace out our star. And I'm going to do all of the star. Just to keep it uniform all the way through. But I think um, that piece that 
Glynis created for the Clarity Matters blog, where she put um, Linda's Christmas treasures in the middle. Like that would work with quite a few of the Christmas treasures. And as I said, you can do this just on a, a normal piece of parchment in one layer. You can do it multi-layered like we, I'm doing here. Or you could do it shaped. Or you could just do it, for example, an A5. Or I think this would look lovely in one of our nested oval dies. Okay, so that's the next one. So now we're going to go down to two and then finally one. So that's a right. So we're going to swing that round now. So we want two. That's going to go just like so. Give it another little wipe. Number two tool. It's it's just repeating really, isn't it, what we're doing. Now, if you wanted to do the Christmas tree all in one piece, then I would suggest that what you do is you do all this with your number two tool first, or your number three, it's entirely up to you. Do all of that first, and then go back in and finish off the rest of the design with the number one tool. Okay, so up to the star. It's a lovely star. And it is very easy to cut out with normal scissors if you choose to. Okay. All the way around, stopping there. in the groovy guy. Look, I mean, there's other different size baubles you've got on the plate as well. I'm not, I actually... No, I'm not going to say it. Ignore that thought that come into your head, Mr. Church. Okay. So, two layers. And then finally, on this little bit here, look at that. I'm glad Linda did um, all the working out on how to get it all onto <laughs> one A4 sheet of parchment. So thank you for that, Linda. See, so this was a, a demo that was done on TV um, previously. Uh, number two tool, and because I kept all the bits and pieces together, it was easy for me to to just pick it up and go with it to show you exactly how it works. Okay. Did it. I'm going to be really stupid now. Right, I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait until I've, I've traced out this part. And then you'll say, oh my goodness, he's really lost the plot now. That's what you get for talking to yourself <laughs> for an hour. Now, I know I'm not talking to myself. I know that um, we have, I've got many good friends in the room with me at the same time. You're just physically not here. That's all. But you are. You're with me in text, if that, yeah. Okay. Let's see what I'm seeing now as I do this bit. Okay. He's lost it, warning. Here he comes. Okay, let's turn this over. It's a hat. <laughs> I just saw a hat when I did that bit. What do you see? 
Do you see the top of the Christmas tree or do you see a hat? Yeah, I know. I told you I'd lost it. Okay, and then finally, we've got this little space up here. And we're going to trace out the star. Deary, deary me. Oh, dear. So the first one, we're going to do the complete star. Just like so. See, and also the magic of um, our coloured parchment is, those of you that are familiar with it, is that you can take the colour out. So when we look at the um, piece that Linda has lovingly created, everything has been done with white work, okay? But what you can do, if you wanted that bauble to be bright red, you can take the color out with an eraser pencil, okay, like so, and then you can color it on the back, okay? Then if you wanted the bows, so these bows and these baubles and the garlands can be whatever color you want them to be. Don't think just because you're using green parchment they've got to be green or you've got to do white work. Um, they can be whatever color you want them to. Okay, so now lift that one off and now we just want the center of the star. Okay, give that a little wipe. Final little star. Number one tour. Easy does it. Just like so. Okay. So now, if you've been following the, the same process, you'll have something. Oops, I'm going to zoom out. Just bear with while I stand up. Oops. Uh, zoom out. I need to go that way. There we go. So you will have something that looks like that. If you're following the same road as I'm traveling down with my Christmas tree. So we've got the largest one and then they reduce down in size. Okay. Nice and easy. It really is. And when I compare it to a piece that Linda's done, look, how spooky is that? Not far off, is it? But we've achieved the same result. Now, if I take a, a piece of white paper, you'll now see, because obviously I'm working on black mat. So now when I put that under there, you can see the vibrancy of that green. Now, we spoke earlier about the bottle green. So let's have a look at the difference between the two color, two different shades of green. So maybe you want more of a, um, a bottle green rather than a bright, zesty green. Choices, choices. They'll both look just as beautiful and we can repeat the same trick on both of those by taking the color out okay but maybe if you're new and you're just starting out then you just want to go with the clear parchment and introduce color in a different way nice and easy that's a lovely that's a very nice and easy start to the first part of this project. So I think what we'll do next week, we will have a look at introducing some white work. We will have a play with taking some color out and reintroducing color. Um, we will also have a look at um, the different ways of, of cutting it out. 
So whether we want to do the pico cutting or whether we want to just cut out of a normal pair of scissors. I mean, I'm fortunate I've got one already, um, yeah, that's already been cut out. Um, pico cut. So it will save me a little bit of time for that respect. Um, and then we can show over the coming weeks how to attach it to the car blank. But I mean, you may want to just cut this out with a normal pair of scissors. You may want to do the whole tree in one go and then just put it onto a car blank because you can. I mean, if we look at the different pieces of artwork, let me just bring in these few pieces here again. So just like um, Francis has done, it's all on one layer. And Francis has done it in sort of like the traditional style where there's no groovy outline. Or you may want to, if you're good at your pico cutting, you may want to give this a, one a go that Glynis did, where rather than pico cut around the outside of the design, pico cut on the inside to create an aperture. Or if you want to get a little bit more creative, you could do something like this that Linda's done with the Snow family. And I definitely reckon that will work with um, the gnomes and the elves. Definitely. And the way in which Linda's done this one, I want to Let's just lift this one up. So what Linda has done, very simply, it really is, trace out your Christmas tree first, or if you're gonna put one of your characters in, trace your character in first, then position your tree and trace out the tree. Then take your gnomes or your elves, position those, trace out the elements, making sure you don't go through the trees. And then if you want to pico cut them all out, you can, because that's all been pico cut in one piece. I mean, it even looks beautiful from the back, doesn't it? So let's if I turn this this way. So let's put it on, let's put it on a, put it on a plate and stand it up. I mean, look at that. The dimension. See, and this is where Mr. Dave comes into play with his fantastic um, platen presses and his die cut car blanks. I think the Christmas tree may have been one of the first goes on this, I think. Can't remember now. It's got so many different designs for his platen press. Isn't that lovely? I need one of those turntables just to turn it round. Okay, to finish off, I oh know, sorry, I, I got distracted there. To finish off, let me just quickly show you the new and exclusive if you missed out yesterday. So this is the latest Christmas treasures being released on Thursday on Creative Craft. We have two lovely centers. We have a very traditional front door, little dog, Christmas tree. Oh, look at that little Robin. I didn't see him on there. Little Robin on the post box. Lovely baubles, as they say. <laughs> um, then we have the Christmas. This lovely sort of flourish around the outside. And then we have the Dex Halls framer as well, the nested verse framer. And here's a couple of pieces um, from the design team that Jilly just quickly pulled out for me. So the first piece is by Glynis. Look at that. Beautiful. It, that makes me excited for Christmas. I want Christmas now. Um, then we have this lovely piece by Francis. Look at that. Look at that ribbon work. Beautiful. Then we have a piece from Carol Baker. Love that one. I love this frame. The hot, the ivy frame. See, and that ivy frame will work with all your other designs as well, not just for, for Christmas. 
And then finally, another piece from Francis using that design. Let me just hold it up because it says, look at that. Beautiful. So I think I've teased you enough now for the, the next um, collection of Christmas treasures. So I hope you can join Barbara at four o'clock and eight o'clock on Thursday on Create and Cry. Cry? Create and Craft. <laughs> that was a cross between Create and Craft Live. It, that's what I meant, not Create and Cry. Create and Craft Live at 4 p.m. and 8 p.m. on Thursday. Then I'll take over on Friday morning at eight o'clock with the final hour of the new and exclusive followed straight after by Barb with, um, oh yeah, the um, outliners and the framer stamps, and then she's back on at one o'clock. So thank you once again uh, for joining me. Thank you for the amazing design team and your company as well. Um, thank you to Stuart for helping. Oh, it feels like the Oscars. And um, I will see you in the Shack Shack with Barb on Monday, um, and hopefully you'll see us before then. So enjoy the rest of the week. Have a play with the Christmas tree and the stockings. Don't forget that we've got them as a pair as a special offer on the website. Just go to special offers on the website and you'll see all the fantastic offers we've got in place for you. So um, I will see you all again next Tuesday where we'll continue to decorate our Christmas tree. Take care now and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.